continuing to work with images. By far, the easiest way to insert images is by creating placeholders and then inserting them. Here's why. Whenever you insert a picture into a publication using the Pictures button on the ribbon, Publisher just slaps the picture on your publication, as you can see here. You then have to drag and drop the image to the location where you want it to appear and also resize it. It's much easier just to create placeholders than insert images using the Graphics Manager. That said, let's talk about how to work with images that you insert using the Pictures button. To move an image, select the image, then move your mouse to the icon displayed here. You can then drag the picture to the location where you want it to appear. You can also right click on this icon in the middle to see the context menu. Using the context menu, you can cut, copy and paste the image, save it as a building block, save it as a picture on your computer, change the picture, apply the picture as the background for your publication, arrange thumbnails, format the picture, zoom in or out on the picture, or add a hyperlink, or a link to a web address. You can also use the tools in the small box that appears to make the colour corrections, crop, wrap text, and other things. We'll cover each of these tools throughout the course. When you insert or paste an image into a publication, it may not be the size you need it to be in order to fit within the publication. No worries, you can always resize it. To resize an image, first select it. When you select the image, the Picture Tools Format tab opens on the ribbon. Go to the Size group. Enter the measurements that you want for the picture. Picture measurements are always in inches. Once you enter the measurement, press Enter on your keyboard. The image is then resized for you. You can also resize images by dragging the handles on the bounding box, as we discussed earlier in the course. However, resizing using this method can cause distortion and or pixelation, as you can see here. Another way to reduce the size of a picture is to crop it. When you crop a picture, you cut away the outer edges of the picture to create a new version. Cropping can be helpful when you want the focus to be on a certain part of the image. Cutting away edges can help achieve that. To crop an image, select it so that the Picture Tools Format tab opens. Go to the Crop group. Click the downward arrow below the Crop button, and then select Crop again. You'll now see crop marks around your image, as you can see here. The crop marks appear on the corners and the sides of the image. They are black in colour. Click and drag your mouse inward toward the centre of the picture using any one of these marks. Click and drag inward on the image until you have cropped away the area that you want to get rid of in the image. As you can see here, the area to be cropped out is shaded. Click outside of the image to remove the cropped area. You can easily adjust the colour of any image you place in your publications. To do this, click on the image to select it. You'll then see the Picture Tools Format tab. Click the Recolor button in the Adjust group here. Choose the colour effect that you want to apply to the image. You can also adjust and modify the colours in your image through colour correction. Once again, go to the Picture Tools Format tab by selecting an image. Let's undo the colour change we just did. Now click on the Corrections button. You can choose a colour correction to apply to the image. Publisher gives you the ability to wrap text around a picture, just as you can do in Microsoft Word and other Office programs. To wrap text around a picture, click on the image. The Picture Tools Format tab will appear in the ribbon. Then go to the Arrange group. In the Arrange group here, click Wrap Text to view the drop-down menu. Click More Layout Options to see all the wrapping options. Square means your image sits on the same plane as the text. The text flows around the image in a square pattern. Tight means that the text will flow around the image, hugging its shape. If you insert a circular shape, the text will take a circular pattern around the text. Through means that the text will flow around the image as best as possible. Top and bottom means text will appear on top of the image and at the bottom. And none means that there's no wrapping at all. You can also select these options directly from the Wrap Text drop-down menu. 
If you want to make your image stand out a little more, you can add a border. To do this, click on the image to select it, then go to the Picture Tools Format tab. Select Picture Border from the Picture Styles group by clicking on the downward arrow. As you can see, you can choose what colour border you want. The colour you choose is also called your outline colour. You can see I've chosen a red border here. You can also choose to add a tint to your outline colour by selecting the tints from the Picture Border drop down menu. Click on Tints and you'll see this window. Select the tint that you want and click the OK button. You can also use the colour that you have in your publication as the border colour. For example, let's use this ship's image here and we'll make it a little bigger. Let's say we want the border colour to be the colour of the water reflection here. Click on Picture Border and then choose Sample Line Colour. Your mouse pointer turns into an eyedropper. Click on the colour that you want to use. We're going to click on the blue reflection here. Publisher then samples the colour and uses it as your outline colour, as you can see around the edge of the image here. Weight refers to the thickness of your border. By clicking Weight in the drop down menu, you can make your border thinner or thicker. If you choose dashes from the drop down menu, you can make the border a dotted line instead of a solid. You can also use a pattern as your border. To do this, select Pattern from the drop down menu here. You'll then see the Pattern Lines dialog box. First, select the pattern you want to use from the Pattern section. Patterns have two colours, the background colour, then the colour of the actual pattern, or the foreground colour. Select the two colours that you want. One colour will be the background colour of the pattern, the other will be the foreground colour. Click OK when you're finished. Whenever a picture is inserted or selected, the Picture Tools Format tab will automatically appear as a tab in the ribbon. It provides you with a few of the most commonly used features available in image editing software like Photoshop. You can change the contrast, add artistic effects, as well as crop or resize images. These are things that we've already talked about in this lesson. In the centre of the ribbon, you'll also see styles that you can add to pictures. You can add frames, drop shadows, reflections and much more. The picture styles gallery looks like this. If you click the downward arrow, you can see all the different styles you can apply to a picture. To apply a style, select the image, then click on a style in the gallery. You can see that the image has been updated here. In addition to the preset styles, you can also add effects to images. The effects that you can add are located to the right of the gallery, under Picture Effects here. When you click the drop down arrow, you can see all the different effects that you can apply. Click the arrow besides an effect to see the options for that effect. For example, here are the options for shadow. As you can see, you can choose what kind of shadow you want to apply to your image. You can also click Shadow Options to further customise the effect. In fact, you can customise all of the image effects in Publisher. You can choose the preset, colour, transparency, size, angle and distance for the shadow effect. When you're finished, click OK. When you're creating publications with images and text, it's always helpful to add captions to your images. Adding captions to your images in Publisher is much easier than doing it in a program such as Word. Click on your image to bring up the Picture Tools Format tab on the ribbon. Click on the drop down arrow besides Caption in the Picture Styles group. It's right below the Picture Effects button. You'll then see this menu here. Choose the formatting that you want for your caption. Now click on the caption. Then you can click on the text inside the caption to edit it. Mm -hmm.